Hi, my name is Darcy Black and I work for Dynamisk Automation. If you missed the first episode of this series, I suggest you go back and give it a look. I spoke a bit about the OT world and what that means compared to the IT world. And today I'd like to delve a little deeper into the types of OT technologies where we can practice some digitalization advancements. When building any complicated systems, we first compartmentalize and try to simplify, then build the complexity. So let's talk about simple loops. For basic process information displays like temperature and pressure, we may have an analog signal to the control system and display it on the HMI. For a simple control loop, we may have an analog input, a control algorithm, and a simple analog output. There may be interlocks for mechanical protection, stopping a pump if a level in a vessel is too low, or temperature interlock stopping a furnace from heating up so much that it damages the internal tubing. These simple loops are controlled within process specifications laid out for product quality requirements, process design requirements, and safety requirements. If a portion of the process is out of specification, alarms sound. If a pump stops unexpectedly, levels rise, temperatures swing, and pressures start to react up and downstream. Operations have to see this information, understand what it means in the grand scheme of the plan to the process. Then they have to react accordingly and bring the process back under specified parameters. Sounds simple. Depending on the facility and the process, it's quite often anything but simple. Each facility has its design specs, each piece of equipment has its needs, and each loop has its own personality. Let's break the automation system back down for simplicity again, so we can talk about how digitalization may help the individual areas of process automation. Alarms, for example. Alarms in the basic process control system. When a plant or section of the plant goes into a process upset condition, alarms start to ring into operations. The situation can easily cascade throughout the plant and be shown in the control system. One alarm turns into five alarms, turns into 20 alarms, turns into 200 alarms very quickly when we call this an alarm flood. A tool we have in our tool belt is to rationalize these alarms in the system configuration. A study of alarms ringing in can show you nuisance alarms that operations can ignore. If operations can ignore them, then why are they alarms? When process systems start to cascade, alarm masking can be implemented. An operator doesn't need a pump tripped alarm followed by a low flow alarm followed by a low pressure alarm, all driven by the same pump stopping. At that point, they need one alarm that says the pump has tripped and the rest of the alarms in that process system can be masked. This is a little more advanced application of digitalization where we can help the control system and operations recognizing the scenario and prioritizing alarms appropriately. How about condition-based controls? Operators are often faced with the same decision paths multiple times in process controls. What I mean by that is to control a level in a vessel, for example, they may need to control the inflowing product and the outflowing product. To keep it simple, we'll say that the outflowing product has two paths one is to a flare and the other is to a vessel downstream. As the upstream vessel fills and reaches its optimum operating level, the outflow to the flare begins. When the downstream vessel or process is ready, the operator starts to close the flare control valve and open the control valve to the downstream vessel. It's fairly common in a startup scenario. In condition-based control scenarios, this can be treated as a sequence. Instead of an operator opening valves and starting pumps manually until stable parameters are met, a sequence is designed in the control system to help make the steps for the operator. A major digitalization advancement could be to tie those scenarios together to start an area of the plant. It's, this is common in low risk processes like water filtration, um, water treatment. A backflash sequence can be started by pushing one button that walks the valves and flows through a flushing sequence. How about process equipment health monitoring? How do you know if a valve is corroded and not opening enough? How do you know if the pump is per not performing to its projected performance curve? How do you know if your motor control center is not doing motor control center stuff? Um, large facilities normally have preventative maintenance plans to try and answer questions like this. The rotating specialist inspects pumps. The valve specialist monitors valve health through an asset management system. The electricians use a UV detector at the door of the MCC to try and detect any heat-based problems, all in an effort to preemptively avoid unplanned downtime. This information can be gathered by the industrial pro process control system, but then what? Operations doesn't want to deal with it, they're still dealing with the alarm flood, 
that we mentioned a few minutes ago while we're about pumps stopping unexpectedly. Um, preventative maintenance information can be gathered and exported to business layers for analysis. If a facility has a thousand pumps, that's great. They have the tools and teams analyzing information for them. This kind of information is easily lost when you're talking midstream or small producers who don't have that infrastructure available. Digitalization will be a boom to this sector of industrial automation as this type of information is gathered and then supplied to companies using cloud computing for bulk analysis. One producer may have 50 pumps, but 10 producers have 500 pumps to compare the performance and that can be used to predictively indicate when a failure of a specific type of pump is imminent. How about safety instrumented systems, SIS? Developing an SIS is complicated. At a high level, you try to design the process safely, keep temperatures and pressures within reasonable levels, try to use chemicals and catalysts that are easier to control and less volatile. Then you use your basic process control system to keep things within safe parameters. If that effort needs to be supplemented, you have operator interactions, alarms as configured in the control system to alert operations, and then as a final control system defense, you have the SIS. To establish the parameters of the SIS, you conduct a HAZOP, which is a hazard and operability study. Then you analyze the layers of protection that I just mentioned. As the SIS at the SIS level, you now have what is lightly called a mountain of paperwork developed by a team of engineers. I have seen several examples in industry where that paperwork is complex and expensive to maintain. You have reasoning for alarm set points, reasoning for instrumentation selection, uh, testing parameters for control elements like valves and all of that is spread across a bazillion forms. But I'm being a little flipped there, but the point is that it's complicated and creates a fair bit of work to maintain. Now fast forward two years when the design team has been demobilized. The site process safety team has the paperwork, but how does operations know when a transmitter A is bypassed for a maintenance activity that it degrades the levels of protection? And by what severity? I've heard of systems, but I haven't been part of the implementation yet. But system, these systems can tie together the HAZOP, the LOPA analysis, the operations, permitting practices, and the testing procedures and requirements of the SIS system all into one system that can show operations when a safety system has been degraded enough that steps should be taken or that risk in degradation has increased to levels that require intervention. That to me is pretty cool. Anything that ties that many layers of complexity or that many databases together to make things safer and help operations maintain the overall integrity of the system required for safety I think it's cool. Um, next time, let's get forward looking. Let's talk about AI, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and maybe some cloud computing to see if we can guess what we may be able to do in the future. Thank you.